and running. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Uh, I am going to flip the script a little bit on the second half of this and be the special guest of the first half. Uh, Deborah Bird is going to be the guest on the second half. So, Todd, why don't you uh, take the Master of Ceremonies, open things up, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Well, hey, welcome, everyone. As you know, uh, Dave and I have been uh, hosting this Friday Mastermind, which means that you, your comments matter. You're you uh, you're part of the show um, for almost six years now, and uh, we're kind of excited. We've brought on none other than Deborah Bird the last uh, six months or so to to add a another viewpoint to what we've got going on. And so today we're really going to talk about presentation and why presentation matters. And Dave's been out traveling the country at President's Club trips, and he's been presenting on that. So we're going to have him talk about that in the first half, and then we're going to have Deborah do her social media part in the second half. But we're going to really kick off talking about what we're seeing right now, like what's important for trends this week. So before we do that, of course, got to welcome you, Deborah Bird. What's going on? Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here, pumped up to share in the later half of some social media tips and tricks and, uh, you know, hear from Dave I've, since he's been traveling the world and going to hear some good nuggets. So I'm excited. You guys play all in. If you're listening to this, drop a comment. Where are you watching from? And make sure you put some questions that you have so we can address them. Perfect. So we're going to talk about what kind of current events, what everyone is seeing, hot topics, post of the week. Where do you want to start, Dave? Yeah, well, let's do this. You know, one thing that I want to create a rhythm around is calling out uh, what's hot in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group. So uh, on Fridays, I'm just going to pull up my screen, just shine a light on some of the back end analytics where you guys can see what what people are looking at the most. Uh, so this is just a, a past 25, what is it, uh, 28 days. And you can see, you know, the activity that we're having behind the scenes. We've got this amazing group. Well, I think there's over 15,000 people. Guys, there's 9,200 of you that are active in this group regularly. Uh, and, and here it is. You know, this looks like the most um, engaged. Although I don't totally get these analytics, Deb. You and I might want to sync up afterwards because, you know, like here's one. And maybe, oh, I guess maybe that's more than 28 days ago. But uh Todd, it looks like that birthday wish you gave me was one of the <laughs> yeah. you know, and That I'm was an important day. Yeah, I'm also confused because Walt had a really hot post that I thought was going to make number one, but uh, it was it was about seller buy down. But it looks like Scott Scott Nicholson's post on seller buy downs made you know the most engaged. Uh, any comments on this step? No, I'm wondering the one that Walt made, was that within, was that the one that you reshared of his or his original? Yeah, was it that? was the one I reshared, but I didn't see it in the. Cause I was wondering scene. if it was within the last 28 days, huh? So maybe it's the way it was shared. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, one clear takeaway is that uh, seller buy down is the hot ticket in the mortgage coach channel. And I spoke at a, uh, two different sales rallies last week uh, spoke to, you know, literally touched and engaged with, you know, thousands of loan officers. And I had a lot of people coming up, you know, seller buy down, seller buy down, creative finance strategies. Uh, we need to be problem solvers. So that's clearly a trend that also um, makes me want to shine, shine a light on some of the insights. Uh, and, and I'll connect the dots to this when I do the presentation best practices but I've been following Todd Bellinger's Borrow Smart blog. Uh, he's been killing it. And I asked Todd this week, what did he think was his best post of the week? And he shared this one um, as the, the best inside of the week. So FYI on that. Also highly recommend if you guys are not following Keeping Current Matters blog, make sure you're, you're following that blog. And I would love for the community, people that watch these calls every week, I would love for you to tell myself Todd and Deborah, what of all the insights shared in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group or YouTube channel, what was most valuable to you that week? That way we could come into this between looking at the data, looking at the posts and the feedback and the comments that we can say, hey guys, here was the gold of the week within this group that we have. Todd, anything you wanna share before I, I get into best practices? You know, I just realized we didn't take a picture beforehand. So let's everyone smile. I'm gonna do a quick screenshot. 
forgot to do my surfer one since I'm here in California. Um, so, so no, wait, no, wait, I love I'm out, everyone. I want to make sure you know what we just did. So you know how when you share a video on YouTube and there's a thumbnail picture and guys, thumbnail pictures matter. It, it increases the amount of people that click through it. It increases the chances of one, someone stopping to scroll and go, oh, what's that? So usually we do this before we go live, but that's what we're doing. But hopefully the takeaway for y'all is if you are doing YouTube videos, uh, be thoughtful of what that thumbnail image is. Anyways, back well, Dave, I don't know who thought of that, but when you did that interview with Garth, like he showed up to y'all's interview and was like, I had to get a shirt because he was all excited to make a <laughs> thumbnail. So you've really kind of gamified it and it, it's fun. So if you guys haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do, but go look at those thumbnails and you can check out how we do different poses. It's fun. And 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 noting, just adding on to that, Garth's interview, they were all called the 2022 halftime report with a name. And I don't know if he was number one, but he was definitely out of over 23 interviews that all had the same headline. His was, if not number one, it was one of the top two or three most viewed. So is that because of his name? Everybody wants to see what Garth Graham is doing, or is that because of how he showed up? I don't know. Tuxedo shirt, man. Maybe. Yeah, it was sharp. It was sharp. It was like I mean, not quite as not quite as sharp as mine and your shirts, Dave. And you know, Deborah's very well dressed today. So I know she's got a big gig this afternoon. That just tells me. Um, and so you were asking me kind of my opinion on things. What what I loved is uh what you just shared. You just shared, hey, these are the things that you're looking at. You're a leader in the industry and you're studying what Todd Ballinger's doing, you're studying what um, David Childress and the Keeping Current Matters team is doing. And so I'd love anyone, you know, share what you're looking at every day. Um, in the group, whether you're in Zoom or whether you're watching this uh, in Facebook or on the YouTube recording, it'd be great just to see what are your resources that are your go-to every day. Because what I've really been uh, pushing my team to do is to take this time and learn, right? Like take 15 minutes a day, minimum, 30 minutes, ideally, and just consume something that can be better. And so for me, um, I sent my team uh, earlier this week, that was their homework. And, and I went, went over and I jumped on the team call with them today just to get their feedback and give them my points of it. I did, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste your, your interview you did with Jeremy, Dave. And I went through, you know, what I felt were the big takeaways from what you said, from what Jeremy said, and then, you know, got takeaways from the rest of the crew. And so if you don't have someone else who's leading you and who's helping you figure out what is the learning path for you? You've got to be self learning yourself. And the YouTube channel uh, is definitely, there's just, uh, you know, buckets and buckets of gold in there. And so I think that that was a great thing for you to highlight, Dave, here's what I'm looking at. And I think everyone else needs to think about, Hey, what am I looking at? I'm, I'm, I'm actually out there producing and Dave is just leading us. He's our chief innovation officer. So you've got to think about what is it you need to be looking at every single day. And then what is it you should be spending extra on time doing right jam sessions um, from a studying perspective right now. Well, all righty, guys. So I will start sharing some best practices. I, uh, like I said, I gave multiple keynotes last week. And presentation is something I've studied my entire professional career, really. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get some laughs out of one of the things that I'm going to show you guys. But before I do that, uh, I did want Walt to be in Zoom at some point in this call. And he said, Dave, I don't know how to get a link on... Um, you know, to be on Zoom. So I wanna show everybody, and Walt, this is to you. Go to our website, go to resources, go to daily training events. Now, we're, we're currently on the Friday Productivity Mastermind. Click down, click on that one, and then you see there's a date. So if you ever wanna watch this in Zoom versus Facebook, our biggest audience is, is uh, our YouTube channel. But if you wanna be on Zoom, because either you wanna, you know, collaborate with us, or you want to be in a place where we could unmute you and bring you into the conversation, go here and click. So just click on this wall, sign up there, and uh, you'll be joining me. All right. So let's do presentation best practices. Uh, and Todd and Deborah, please interrupt me anytime. Uh, but, but guys, I really, I, I was thinking as I was preparing for these events, I have been focused on presentation since I got in the mortgage business. And, and here, here's an example of how I presented in 1992. And, and this picture right here was, was the beginning of my advice makes a difference is my core value prop. This was about five years before I, I came up with the mortgage coach idea. 
but this this is a photo that, that we're we're moving right now and my wife and daughter were cleaning out the garage and i forgot that this picture even existed but this this was a picture of me and it was a photo shoot for a brochure that i was creating because i had landed on this value prop that my advice makes a difference and and then i wanted people to believe me and and you notice look at my presentation i mean i had an expensive you know suit and tie i had the gold watch i had the mont blanc pen you know i had the hp 12c and of course i was an early adopter of technology i had the you know the 1980s uh computer but 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 that was the beginning. It was like and great hair too, Dave. Great hair. I was just going to call it out. Do you like that hairdo? <laughs> I'd love it. Uh, so, so this, this, this was it. And, but I hadn't really figured it out. Like what I learned, you know, after, after this was how you show up, the energy you have, how you look, it all matters. But I would tell you for me now today, after the mortgage coach journey, you know, my presentation is my ability to ask great questions and my ability to solve someone's problems. And so that Mont Blanc pen that, you know, you guys see me, I'm in black t-shirts all the time. Uh, you know, I've landed on this place where, you know what, I could just connect people, my energy, my eye contact, the questions, the solutions, leadership, driving people through a process. That's what matters most. Now, now I'm not saying looking well-dressed, doesn't matter, but you all have a brand. My brand is I'm a technology entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I've worked hard to be this chief innovation officer for the mortgage industry and as chief innovation officer for mortgage coach. Uh, you know, that's that's my role. So I'll, I'll take a break before I get into some very specific best practices, but Todd or Deborah, anything you want to comment on? I'm trying to let Deborah go first. Unless you don't have anything, I'll jump in. No, I, I'm I'm wanting him to keep going, but I just I think it's hilarious seeing that photo, and it, it I was getting flashbacks of how kind of the evolution of just social and how socials allowed people, and really COVID, to to be your most authentic self and to show up and have the energy. I, I do think energy is really important when you're presenting on video. That's one of my first tips to people is don't, you know, when you when you hit record and you're like this people can feel that, you know, so, you know, do you like your job, but also just be you. And I think for so long and, and some of my baby boomer clients, they still feel like they have to show up with that three piece suit and always be super polished and professional. And, you know, I'm showing them great examples like Justin Brown. If you guys, you know, saw him on the, the summit, he had a great segment and he talked about social media and he shows up, he has a ball cap on it's backwards. He's got tattoos showing and you know, what you see is what you get. And when you meet them, on stage or off stage, you're going to get the same person. And so that's what uh, my first chuckle was not only seeing the big TV looking thing, that box in the corner called a computer, but in Dave's hair, but also just how you, hair, right? things. Yeah. But Dave, you're also my example do of do what? I wish I could still do that with my hair. Well, you sometimes you, you, do this try. on calls. <laughs> Well, and, and I think I think you kind of nailed it, right? Your look matters, and so like when we interviewed Wally last week, Wally's he's dressed to the nines. He's got a he's got a look, right? It's Todd Duncan's birthday day. Everyone wish him a happy birthday. Well, by the way, he has a bookcase in the background that you know, leaders are learners. Yep, exactly. And and uh, you know, Todd wears you know unique colors and styles whenever you see Todd. We you know we interview Jeremy all the time, right? You see Jeremy um, when he's talking lately to us as a group. He's got on his glasses and he's very you know collared shirt buttoned up um, but you also see him sometimes where he's leading a leading a team call or a team meeting and he's got the hat on and so think about what that is I mean for me I started off in um, a tie because I didn't own a suit jacket and wore that every day even though I didn't meet with clients then I eventually went to a full suit then I eventually went to a suit no tie and then I eventually went to a sport coat um, with jeans and then now look at me you know now I just live the casual life like Dave I'm not a tech entrepreneur but uh but I've got it but I think that was a great way to start Dave all right, well, let's get into it. And guys, I'm going to get into very specific checklists. Like you'll see there's going to be a, you know, a checklist on presentations. There's going to be a whole list of best practices. But I, I, want, to, I want to start here uh, because I think all those checklists and all those tactics, they, they don't matter if you don't get what I'm going to share right now right. And and while some of you on this call have heard me talk about the challenger sale, I'm going to pretend like this is the first time you're hearing it because I think it's so important as a review. 
Uh, this is my all time favorite sales skill book. So I have read over, I mean, hundreds of books on sales and marketing or audio books. Uh, I have probably a thousand, but this is my number one book. And, and this is why guys. So first of all, it's like a good to great where it's based off of research and data. It's not just some great sales guy and some great sales trainer telling you their opinions or what's worked for them. This is, this is a, a group that did an analysis of 5,000 of America's best salespeople, not mortgage or real estate, just some of the best salespeople in America. Um, people that work for ADP, you know, their top 10%. People that work for Microsoft, their top 10% salespeople. Uh, Caterpillar, I think, um, participated in the study. So these big companies took their top 10% sales performers and they gave it to this company. It's called the CES group, I think. And then they broke them down and they came up with a framework and they came up with these profiles. So some of these best salespeople were the hard worker. Some of them were the relationship builder. Some of them were the lone wolf. Some of them were the problem solver. But the, the biggest group of these top 10% were challenger sales reps. So uh, Todd, I know you know the answer, but I, I'm gonna ask the question to the audience. Who, who came in second? So if the challenger, and remember, every salesperson is a little bit of all these things, but there's, you know, in your sales strategy, they figured out like, hey, this person is mostly a challenger rep. This person is mostly a relationship builder. So I want to ask the audience right now, and I would push you to write it down, who challenger came in first, who came in second? Deborah, have you heard this conversation before? No. Who do you think came in second? Ability to sell and convert, I would say Correct. probably problem solver. Okay. Todd, I'm not going to ask you because you've heard this. You got that wrong. You, Lone Wolf <laughs> came in second. Lone really? Wolf came in second. And here's the thesis when you read the book and you get it all. Lone Wolf kicks ass, but you can't build sales best practices around the Lone Wolf. You know, they're just, they're, they're, they're living on instincts and confidence and, you know, but they, they kicked ass. They came in second. So Deb, who came in last? Out of these five personality types, you now know two, the top two. Which one came in dead last? I mean, I'm struggling because I would think relationship builders got to be up there, but if you, you could be great at building relationships, but not a closer. So pick it, make a pick, pick a, I, pick a last one. Um, hard worker. Okay. Bzz, two wrong answers. Guys, the relationship <laughs> rep came in last. Wow. And, and, and Deb, don't feel bad. Like I, I missed I wouldn't have answered the question right either. So when, you know, before reading this book, I would have not got the answer. Uh, I very, very few people have got this answer right. So, and I'll have to say guys, I was skeptical. Like when I was, I don't know, it was page 30. It was before page 70 that they did this that I'm like, I don't know about this. You know, like really? You know, I grew up thinking that the relationship, it's all about relationships. Well guys, here's the framework. When I show you the framework, of the challenger sales rep, what you're gonna see is that the challenger sales rep has great relationships. In fact, they have better relationships and they create them faster because of the way that they engage with folks. And guys, here it is. They tailor, so they ask great questions. This is what the challenger rep does. They teach, so their, their goal is to teach the consumer something that they didn't know. By the way, and not only just teach them something that they didn't know, teach them something in a commercial way that differentiates them and differentiates their product. So it's not just teaching for the sake of, wow, I didn't know that. And wow, I didn't know that. It's like, wow, you're a badass and I should buy from you. So it's teaching in a very specific way and then take control. They, they lead, they control the sales process. When you, when you look at a relationship builder, they're generous with their time. They get along with everyone. They say yes to everything. But you know what they have a problem with? You see at the very top, Taylor teach control and it's wrapped constructive mm -hmm. attention. That is really tough for the relationship sales rep. And, but the challenger rep, Taylor teach control wrapped with constructive tension. Deb, what are your thoughts? Do you believe this study now after seeing the framework? 
Oh yeah. And I'm already picturing myself when I, when I first even got, when I left teaching, I was the relationship builder. And I remember my business coach at the time had told me what you're basically doing is charity because you're not good at asking for the business or closing. And so I had to really work on that piece because I thought I could just rely on being the connector and being likable. And I hadn't yet mastered some of the financial literacy stuff just yet, you know, I was still learning those skills, but there was a big shift once I could learn that aspect and really change the way people thought about things. And and Todd Duncan had a great, I can't remember which interview we did with him, but just how you have embedded commands and certain thought provoking questions to, to create pattern interrupts makes people immediately be like, Hmm, you're different. And you're teaching me something that I hadn't been taught before. And I, th I think this is great. Can you give cool. an example of the constructive tension of, of how let's get to that. I, I, okay. I I've only got, if you're going to have any time at your halftime, we, I got to get through some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, that's a, we, we could spend an hour on constructive tension. Um, Todd, anything you want to ask or say, because I, I, I am going to go a little over it looks like, because I've got about 10 more minutes of content, but Todd, anything you want to say before we go to this next chapter? I mean, I'll, I'll go short. I, you know, I was surprised too. I felt relationship always wins and, and I teach relationship matters more now than ever. Um, and so what I would say is, is that I, I think if you looked at that in 2022, that you have to have some level of relationship as well, because what I find is when I talk to loan officers who do a great job of building relationship with their clients, then, and then take it to control of it afterwards, that they have less shopping, right? They're doing a better job. And so I just say, don't, don't, don't not focus on the relationship, but, but make sure you add in these other parts that Dave is talking about. Yeah. And, and, and again, remember guys, relationships matter. It's just, how do you create the trust in the relationship and the, the challenger sale process is, is the fastest, most efficient way to do that. And then let's break it down for the mortgage business. You know, this is a framework questions so that you can personalize uh, a total cost analysis so that you can teach at scale and consistently, like literally every single borrower in America, when you ask the right questions and you show them a total cost analysis, you teach them something in a way that they want to do business with you and that they trust you. And then instead of calling it control, I like leadership, leadership for success. And then when you think of constructive tension, I think in the mortgage space, especially in today's market, it's more than constructive tension. It's extreme transparency. It's radical authenticity. It's empathy. So, so this is a framework for presenting to whether you're presenting one to one or you're presenting one to many. I want you to really think about this framework. And these are all the things that if you can like, yeah, I'm asking the right questions. I'm doing a great job. I'm, I'm using a total cost analysis to teach consumers, realtors, partners, content. I'm doing that one-to-one. -one. I'm doing that on TCA Tuesday. Uh, I am a leader. I embrace constructive tension. I am transparent. I am authentic. And I have full-on empathy. Guys, if you score high in all these categories, you're going to be a great presenter. So, so like the tactics will come, but you got to master this framework. So Another thing I want to say before I get into the, just call it the details on best practices for presentation, is you have to realize that every consumer right now, every realtor right now is either upset about the rate you're sharing with them or they're, or they're surprised by the rate you're sharing with them. So they're, they're going to shop you. And this is also another reason why every realtor in America, if if the right loan officer shows up, asks the right questions, teaches them the right things, seller buy down, move up analysis, they have a better chance right now of recruiting that realtor because there's a lot of opportunity. This was a, a quote from Jay Kroll, uh, one of the top loan officers in America out of Seattle. He did over, um, well, he did 295 million last year and he's, um, he's doing well this year. I'm gonna be interviewing him in the next couple of weeks because he's got a presentation called the sales mindset that y'all are going to love. So stay tuned for that. So let's just get through some checklists and then we'll do some Q and A around this. And then uh, we'll bring Deb and uh, we also had Walt join us. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where we go in the next half. But guys, presentate, eye contact matters. How you show up in person on Zoom matters. Um, know the client's needs and challenges. This came from the presentation I did with Jeremy Forcier. He said, run towards the challenge in this market. Uh, 
we talked about that in the, uh, what it was that we did a presentation called Don't Let a Good Crisis Go to Waste a couple of weeks ago. Check out the YouTube channel. Uh, you got to uniquely solve challenges. You've got to bring clarity, unique clarity to consumers and realtors. And then you deliver advice and price with Mortgage Coach. I've already covered that. I do want to give you guys a heads up. I interviewed Ryan Grams a couple of weeks ago. It's in the YouTube channel. He is an expert at um, the AV side of things so that you've got the right camera, you've got the right mic. Uh, he consults with um, Rene Rodriguez. He's upgraded, like I'm just using my laptop right now, but he's trained me and mentored me. Uh, gosh, Todd, I think you've worked with Ryan before, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And, you know, that's where you guys remember Dave set up at his at his house where he's got the cool white backdrop. And then you can you can see the other people in our community, like Dan Keller and Keith Collins, who talk to him. They've got the cool different. lighting going on. Yeah. And Shayla Shayla just has a set up from Ryan. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, again, it's it's how you look matters. Right. What do you want it to look like? And um, and I think that that is always, always really critical. So I think you're I think you're spot on, Dave. I think you're highlighting things that are important that we often forget about, but we need to remind ourselves when we're going into a conversation to make sure that we just don't have the gaps that will cause us to lose clients. And it was funny because when you were walking through the previous slide, I was thinking about Jay's quote, right? That, um, and I went over that with my team this morning. I just think that that's really, uh, really great. Um, and I'd love your feedback, Dave, on how do you find out, how do you, how do you determine upfront early in a conversation, whether you're going to surprise a client um, with where rates are? Um, because ultimately, I think that's where a lot of loan officers are losing are losing the transaction. Yeah, well, I, I think in the context, I mean, Jeremy, you know, start with, you know, what do you, what do you, how can I help you? You know, what what are you looking to do? And then and then you know, just get into uh, the the question after the question is always the best question. So the, don't have like I'm always going to start. Well, it's okay to always start with one question. And, and maybe there's a number two and a three that you're going to make sure you have in every discovery session. But the question after the question is, is the best question and make sure it's, it's tailored for personalization and connection. Um, so let me get through a few more best practices and then we'll open it up guys. Cause I do want to throw one thing in real quick, Dave, I know we're going to yeah, run late, cool. but I would, I always like the idea and I'd love your feedback on it. I'm just ask them, well, what do you, um, when someone's like, you know, you're like, Hey, it's, you know, Todd, Hey, you know, what do you, you know, they introduce themselves. Awesome. Hey, what do you, what do you think about the market? And then that way you can kind of get a temperature for them. Right. I love that. Jeremy said, don't call it crazy, call it complex. Um, but if someone says, Oh my gosh, rates are crazy. Right. Then you know that that's what you're going to charge towards. Um, they're not going to be surprised, but if you're like, well, what do you mean? You know, like, well, have you seen what rates, you know, my next question would be the question after the question is, well, have you seen what's going on with rates? Cause that way you can see if they're going to be surprised by what you're going to present. And then you know how you're going to tailor the conversation, take control and create that, that tension that Dave's talking about. So let's see this Todd. I want you to be thinking of what are the three questions that you think should be part of a good borrower or realtor conversation. I want anybody watching this right now, what are, what are like the one or two questions that you either open up every conversation with and then you, you start digging for the problem? What, what are those questions? So first of all, if you're watching this on YouTube in the recording, put that in comments. Hey, here's my favorite two or three questions. If you're watching this in Zoom or Facebook, put your questions down, guys. And let's, let's come up with a list of questions that's helping the industry have better conversations. I watched a video from Shayla Gifford this morning on social media. I'm sure uh, Deb and her team probably helped post that, but it was called um, Marry Your Home and Date Your Loan. And I'm, I'm actually inviting <laughs> Shayla to have a whole conversation around that, but I guarantee you there are loan officers that are asking better questions and they're, they've got better phrases to create tailor teach control experiences than others. So stay tuned for that, but put your comments and questions down below. Uh, all right, let me go back to my screen. I'm going to go through this list real quick, and then I'm going to call it wrap up the best practices of presentations. So first of all, I want you guys to realize that these are ranked, all of these on a scale of one to 10 in terms of making impact in your presentation success, all of them are an eight to a 10. So there's nothing here that on a scale of one to 10 on impact that is like a five or a six, like everything on this, uh, these are the most valuable things you can do to deliver presentations in the marketplace. Now they are ranked from easiest 
in cheapest to hardest. And, and so there's, there's nothing easier to implement than a heart of curiosity, you know, no assumptions. And guys, that's right out of the four agreements. One of the four agreements is don't make assumptions. And that is, that is a 10, you know, well, first of all, every one of these is a 10, but that's free, cheap. It's not easy, but something that we could all show up with, with curiosity in every meeting we have with folks. Heart of service, be a servant leader. I have found that when I um, talk to some of the best loan officers in America that use mortgage coach, they all have that servant leaders, that heart of service. When I, I've talked to some loan officers that close a lot of loans, and they're like, eh, I don't have time for mortgage coach. Oh, I don't need mortgage coach. And usually those are not the servant leaders. Those are the people that I know what's best and they're, they're good at it. You know, they've been doing this long enough that they build rapport with people and they're good sales people, but they may not be quote unquote, a servant leader. Uh, the lone wolves. Servant leader, what's that Todd? The lone wolves. Yeah, the lone wolves. Uh, now, by the way, I'm not saying everyone who doesn't use mortgage coaches does not have a heart of service and is not a servant leader. I'm not saying that. Um, but I will tell you that is that is huge in terms of impact. Storytelling slash story selling. Cheap, easy to do, no expense, have some great stories. Uh, actually, when I was at this event with Jay Kroll, he called out, you know, I see so many loan officers, the difference between the best and the rest that they're, they're presenting, but they're not tying it down. They're not asking for next steps. They're not getting buy-in from, I told you some stories, I connected with you to, let's schedule the next meeting now. Uh, best practice I'm seeing in the marketplace right now is that some of the best loan officers have some slides. You know, they've got five to 20 slides, either in PowerPoint, Google Slides, uh, I'm going to show an example of what Sosi has, uh, but they've, you know, Keith Collins, we did a whole interview on this. Uh, they've got some slides, you know, that they're either market insights, they're value prop, there's some type of educational visual aids, uh, mortgage coach, total cost analysis, 20 reps of mortgage coach. You notice it's getting harder. So it's going from easy, mortgage coach does cost money. It does have a learning curve. And until you've done 20 reps, it's, it's hard to do. Um, number eight, selling the problems you solve, not the loan products and rates. That's, uh, that's harder than some of these things because you've got to be an expert. Being an advisor, advice always beats price. So again, guys, it's getting harder. It's requiring more skill. Uh, finding the heart of the consumer. Guys, that's really hard. I should actually flip these around and make uh, find the heart number 11 because high trust interview is hard. You know, Todd Drunken's high trust interview. It's, 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 it's a skill. It takes a little more time and it's a path to finding the heart, but those two kind of going together and then guys rounding it out to the, the things that create the most impact. It's close it out with consistency and mastery and, and guys mastery is a lifetime. Like, you you just never are there, but it, it's hard to get to that point and it's, it's never ending, but consistency is the difference between the best and the rest. You know, I've interviewed thousands of the best loan officers and, and there are just consistent ways that they deliver that borrower presentation, that realtor presentation. It's hard to do, but it is the difference between the best and the rest. Todd, anything you want to call out on that or anything you want to ask me? You know, I just, uh, well, first off, thank you. I think that's great. You know, I, I think it's, uh, it's a huge value to the group here to think about what is it that's going to get there. And, and I just go back to the picture where we started with you in 1992, right? You were working on, on mastery back then. And it kind of goes to what I said earlier. You really have to be spending time um, every day trying to improve yourself, your skills. I know that's why you're watching this now. So I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but it's, it's got to be a reminder of that. And, you know, I think, you know, certainly you're Mr. Mortgage Coach, but, you know, as someone who got Mortgage Coach the first day I got in the mortgage business and found that that was a huge differentiator for me in uh, as a new loan officer and then really through every market, you know, that I was ever in, I feel like, you know, you, you know, you don't always downplay, you downplayed it a little bit there, but I, I think ultimately, you know, think about the presentation that you're giving the clients. I think that that in the end, if you kind of are mediocre everywhere else, by having a TCA, you're actually elevating your game higher than you think. It should give you the confidence that you need. 
Deborah, anything you want to call out or ask? Just to also emphasize the fact that, you know, you said consistency is the difference between the best and the rest, as well as those best practices for the salespeople. So, you know, curiosity, heart of service, storytelling, when you think of social, I think sometimes people pigeonhole social as just a communication platform and you forget about the power of the tool of social listening. If you would spend some of your consumption time, like Todd had mentioned, I think you said it was 15 or 30 minutes consuming content guys social media is free and it's a place where if you were in tune to what your clients your partners are asking what are they talking about and this isn't post directly to you but it could be things that they are financially struggling with or this is how i help craft better content by looking at analytics and insights to see all right we're still seeing in the top google trends of people searching are we in a housing bubble is the market going to crash so don't forget to create the consistency while leveraging social and social data and social insights to craft better meaningful messages that do go to the heart of your consumers by being consistent online while also doing a TCA at least once a week. I call it TCA Tuesday, which is a great way to show how you think differently from a one-to-many strategy of the problems that you solve. So Alex Cook has a great single mom refi example that he did that is a, a perfect framing following the Amplify process of the, the intro where you emotionally connect, then you go into the message solving the problem. But um, my, my echo to what you just shared, Dave, is just don't forget to allow this to go on social as a one-to-many following the same practices. Right on, right on, right on. So I do wanna call out a few pe people online. So Adam Nelson, thank you for the Dave Savage is the Mr. Steal Your Deal or the 1992. And I did like, dude, if I was getting double lapped or someone was, I was always winning those deals. Uh, so I like what um, Marina said. I followed Dan's Keller's question. Why do you want to buy a house? Trade a hook. Uh, I love what Jeffrey Myers called out. Ask the realtor, how can I help them? today because i do want to remind you jeremy forcier has you know five of the all-time best questions to ask in every realtor meeting i will put a link to one of the short videos to that when i'm not talking here in a minute but jeremy forcier's five questions to ask every realtor is is just pure pure gold uh so guys if you have questions on presentation best practices put them in comments Maybe I'll have time to answer them in this call or I'll do it in another Friday, Wednesday call, or Friday call. Uh, I do want to hand it off to Deborah. Sorry, I went a little over Deborah. Also, I did want to give you a heads up, Deborah, that I did invite Walt to this call yes. uh, because his seller buy down content is getting such great engagement. I'll leave it to you because you, you have some things you want to share. And then Walt's also one of your customers, one of your clients. So whenever you want me to, I'll, uh, unmute him or I'll, I'll bring him onto the panel, but I'm going to, I'm going to flip the script and you're going to bring Deborah on as our special guest for the rest of the call. And Deborah, what do you want to, what do you want to share with everybody? And just let me know when you want me to bring Walt into the conversation. I, I want to share my screen if that's okay. Cause I wanted to hit on best presentation tips just with your social accounts and some, some little tactics and hacks to include. Um, one of them is what I sent you Dave earlier in our, in our chat. Um, I don't Go know if you it. saw it yet I'll with the link tree, but can you, can you see it now? We do. We do. Okay, good. So I had made this post. I know it's kind of hard to probably see here. So if you follow the plug and play underscore SM on Instagram, this is a, it, it's a, it's a hack that you can use for Instagram mainly because there's six different traffic sources through Instagram, whether they find you through going through your profile your home feed, reels, hashtags, if you're tagging location or using audio, those are all possible ways that people can find you. So for example, if you make a post and you're using a trending audio and maybe on another post somewhere, you have someone who had clicked on that sound and they're wanting to scroll of all the different ways that people have used that audio. There's just multiple ways that people can find you through Instagram. And I think people sometimes forget how TikTok and Instagram is such a, a big social search network as well, not just a distribution channel like Facebook. So a couple best practices when you're presenting your initial bio on Instagram is all in this graphic here. So you want to make sure that you have a good 
eye-catching, you know, headshot or logo. Obviously in mine, I, I use my logo, but if you're using a headshot, you could do like a bright color in the background. This line right here, so it's not your handle, it's the name of your account. And again, I know this is really hard to read, but it says plug and play SM. And then you'll see it says social media marketing creator. This should be keyword rich. So if you had your name here, you're going to want to put mortgage advisor, modern mortgage originator, something here that if someone were to go into the social search feature, again, I, if you're hyper local, I would put maybe Dallas real estate agent or Dallas loan officer. That way, soon as they go to search, this is going to pull up more quickly. And you do have a limitation on characters. Obviously, you can tell I've maxed mine out. Uh, the body of this section, again, it, you, you've got to be short and sweet and to the point, but you need to clearly define what you do. Um, so obviously for mine, I put, we create media to transform lives and it's more for social media, but you can, some good examples would be, you know, you could look at the mortgage nerd, go to her bio on Instagram and you'll see, I believe it's, we help families build wealth through real estate, but it's, it's usually a good idea to start with, we help do blah, 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 blah. Um, and then if you aren't familiar with Linktree, Linktree is a free link where you can pull up, if, if you've ever made, you know, captions on Instagram, you can't have clickable links. So for example, when, when I made my post for this webinar, I couldn't put the link for the webinar in my caption that I was writing out for Instagram, which can be, you know, kind of a nuisance because do you do a bit.ly and then people are going to have to try to type it in. And, and so if you just got used to saying, click the link in my bio, like you can see if you're following win by noon, win by noon has a link tree account and you can see their planner, their win by noon store, the win by noon YouTube channel. And, and so you just click their link tree link, which by the way, is a link you can share on any platform. You could share it via text. It makes it very easy for people to choose exactly what they're looking for and just to be able to click and go. And I think that's what we have to remember is it's people's time and attention is, is not a lot. So how easy are you making it for people to be able to contact you if they need to? I also wanted to point out just these this highlight section. So I have people ask me a lot of times the difference between a story and a reel. The story, when you post to your story, which only lasts for 24 hours. A little hack for you guys is make sure that you're posting about four to five times on your story a day. I know that seems like a lot, but we are seeing more and more story surfers out there. So they'll click on stories and they kind of get lost in the story land, so to speak. And so if you can make your first story of the day, maybe an engagement one with a sticker that says, like you could be at your coffee pot and it could show a picture of your coffee and you could say, what color is your coffee? That's what I mean by an engagement story. But then you're doing about four to five story posts every single day. You can always share one of your graphics to your story and you know put read caption below. So you're kind of selling people to get on your newsfeed. But the story feature, the only way to get it to last longer than 24 seconds is if you highlight it here. So you could have different, like here's your reviews like client testimonials, you could have examples of anything that would pertain to maybe rent to own, move up buyers, move down buyers. But look at this as kind of like the new version of your business card slash website all in one. And then the newest feature that just came out with Instagram is you can now pin, I don't know if you can see here, this little, looks like a little thumbtack. You can now pin three posts that will stay put on the very top row of your Instagram so that anytime someone lands on your feed or is referred to you and they're going to kind of scope you out, this is what they will see first. And then below is all your other posts that have been made in that chronological order. So like for me, I have uh, social media packages that we post on your behalf, all of our video marketing packages for people who just maybe need editing or, you know, whatnot. And then social media packages that uh, you can post that we create for you and um, makes it real quick and simple for people to learn more about what we do. So this is just best practice with presenting and how you first show up online for social on Instagram. Any questions? I think that's Todd? key. No, I think that's just, uh, I mean, I think it's key, right? For all of you, it's, this is going to take you five, 10 minutes, right? First off, go look at Deborah's uh, plug and play underscore SM. If you're not following it, follow it. And then she recommended you look at Denise, the mortgage nerd. 
um, who's obviously one of your clients as your identical twin sister, um, and just swipe and adapt and, and make yours better. And I think in the end, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, when he said four to five times a day, if I, if I get a story up once a day, I'm pretty proud of myself. And uh, unless I'm on vacation or at a concert or something, I might put up a couple. So now I'm going to, I'll make sure tomorrow morning I show you guys my coffee. And uh, hopefully you'll all comment on what color your coffee is after I post that. But um, I think really just know um, that you're giving uh, free advice from someone who's got the best people in the mortgage industry paying her for it. So thanks, Deborah. You bet. The, the other thing that I was going to share real quick, because um, I know on your, we do a, a Monday webinar for Win by Noon. So those of you who are in the, the Win by Noon, if you're not in the Win by Noon community, there's another Facebook group that you can join. And Todd and I go over some of this on Mondays. And this was a topic that, you know, when you're trying to be productive and I think your social media time is included in your prospecting. So I tell my clients your goal, and I have done this with my team, where if you set a 15 minute timer, you could, if focused, so 15 minutes out of maybe your 60 minutes of prospecting, you could make 45 comments, proactive comments on other people accounts, on other people accounts and 20 story replies. So if you see someone have a story, so like Todd's going to do tomorrow with what color is his coffee, if you will reply to that story, that is so huge for the algorithm because it thinks you have a relationship with that person. But how do you do that without getting distracted? Because we all know you start seeing notifications or the moment you pull out your phone and you go on social, you can you know get lost and it's four hours later and you, you now haven't done anything. So both on Facebook and Instagram, you can create what's called a favorites feed. Now the max is 30 people. So you'd have to really get intentional and how you set this up is you would go to that friend and you can rank them basically, or you could put them in different groups, but it'll ask you, do you want to, you can put them as a favorite. And so when I open up my Facebook feed, I can just click your feed here, or I can click favorites. And when I click favorites, now I'm only going to see the top 30 most critical relationships that I'm either wanting to nurture. Maybe they're my top clients or referral sources or family members where now I can be super focused I'm not going to get distracted. I'm going to use this for my prospecting time because I'm there with a purpose, right? I only, if I'm only have, if I have 60, 60 minutes total for prospecting and I'm taking out 15 to, to do my social listening and have my truth antenna up of like what people are asking in my community, as well as showing love and building relationships, then this is a great way to do that on social. And just remember with social, the more connections, the funnel is connections lead to conversations, especially when you're messaging on stories. It just kind of opens up an easy way to have conversations, which then leads to conversion. So make that your connection. Keep make, You need to be consistent on making those posts, value-added posts, screenshotable posts. Are they leading to conversations? Are you asking people to you know respond in the comments below? Are you forwarding your your post to different agents saying, Hey, I thought of you when I made this post, this could benefit you. I did that yesterday with Dan Keller and Jeremy Forcier and even Todd Duncan, Ryan Grant. I sent them all uh, my recession post that I had made. And ironically, it then gave me an idea of, I wonder how many mortgage people and teams also started their business during a recession or, you know, depression. So Todd Duncan had said his name should have been on the list. Ryan Serhant, um, Ryan Hills with RE Source. So that was kind of interesting, but um, I just want to point this out for those who maybe aren't creating content yet on social, which we can help you with. But if you're a consumer, use this and leverage social for your prospecting time with relationships. So Love it. Love it. I mean, it's the textbook uh, lesson on what we all need to be focusing on. I think if we, you know, again, I'm saying you got to learn every day. So check out plug and play. We got 10 minutes left. Should we try to bring over Walt? Yes. All right. I guess the question is, is I don't know that I have that power, but here comes the man with the power, Mr. Savage right. to, right. to help us with that. And so, you know, I, again, while we bring over Walt, I mean, uh, you know, I would say, um, you know, if you didn't watch the interview that we did with Walt last Friday, I would, I would encourage you to watch it. If you're thinking about how to run a mastermind and how to get more clients to engage with you, he talked about how he's doing the CMA a day challenge. And now he's bringing in experts like Deborah and I to actually talk to his group. And I had the opportunity on Tuesday morning to be part of Walt's conversation, see him in action with uh, the number one team in his market 
in Salem, Oregon. And so welcome, Walt. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good to see you, brother. Thank you for uh, tuning into the call. And, yeah. you know, Walt, Walt, dude, you're, first of all, you're such a great member of this community. You're always uh, sharing things that are working for you. Uh, you're commenting and helping people in our Facebook group. So first of all, thank you, my friend. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I mean, the group is massive and, uh, and you hang with eagles, you're going to soar, right? <laughs> yeah, well, dude, you're, you're soaring. Uh, seeing, you know, the engagement you're getting with some of the, the local outreach that you're doing and the education you're doing in schools, uh, it's, it's really impressive. And uh, that call you did with Deborah and Todd last week, where you, you talked about what you're doing. But, but guys, Walt had reached out to me um, a couple of days ago, him and I had a conversation yesterday, and I, I said, hey, this would, why don't we start this conversation in this group? So why don't you, you tell everybody what you're thinking about? And Deborah, feel free to you know, play off of this, and let's start another conversation in the community. Cool. So I think uh, one thing that's became very apparent to me in this market this market seems to me a lot like at this very start of COVID, where we had leaders starting to lead. They stepped up and started to lead. Um, and that's the same thing right now. We've got individuals that need to step up and start to lead. They need to lead in their communities. And right now, so many people are freaking out. It doesn't, I mean, the clients are freaking out. Realtors are freaking out. Lenders are freaking out. You know, the sky is falling. Um, guys, it's okay. <laughs> And we really need to calm people's nerves down. Um, and, and so now I think it's more important than ever to really educate. As you guys talked about early on, <clears throat> it's educating. I had a client yesterday that I spoke to that uh, he's big in crypto and he understands that market extremely well. Uh, and as I started to walk through with him about rates and where we were and his rate now is a full point above where it was when we started and and uh, he, he freaked out. I mean, his loan amounts 1.4 million, his payments over a thousand dollars more a month due to this. Um, but as I started talking to him about a refinance coming up, potentially a refinance and a recession, he, as I showed him the data, he calmed down and he realized, okay. And in fact, his word was, I'm glad I have a pro in my corner that's going to guide me in this. Um, and, and I hope that you know, that you're correct, um, where, you know, he's looking at the crypto world. And of course, his world's been decimated by what, 80% or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but I think it's, it's more important now than ever to lead, to step up, lead, to educate, um, to give correct information. The media is not giving correct information. So I've got two mastermind groups right now that I'm doing. Um, they're both CMA Day mastermind groups um, that I've been blessed to be able to have Deborah at both of them. I've asked Todd to come and T Todd's been at one of them and he's going to be at another one where we've got people in this community that are willing to help one another share best practices. So Todd has come and, and talking about when by noon and, and how do you win the day by noon and, and Deb has came in and talked about social media. So rely upon one another. I mean, you know, have Deb out, have Todd out, have, have them out for a general realtor session. Um, you know, I had a CE class that I had 164 agents sign up and 89 show up. Um, so have CE classes. And again, that whole class was talking about dispelling the media. So telling the truth behind the numbers, you know, the media is there to, to sell fear. Um, to sell advertising. So again, I think it's just more important now than ever to step up and lead and, and share the truth and cut through all the, the noise and the crap that's out there. That makes sense. It makes sense in my mind. No, I, I think it's, I think it's great advice. And I think that, you know, again, so many of you um, reached out to Walt afterwards or to me or Deborah about what Walt, what Walt's doing to get these groups going. And so um, join Deborah and I on Monday um, over in the Win by Noon community. Just go to winbynoon.com forward slash calendar, and you can sign up for the webinar that we'll be doing with Adam Nelson, where he'll really walk through a system for creating client events. I think that'll be, you know, a great opportunity 
um, to get a little bit of insight into how to do what Walt is doing from Adam, who behind the scenes has done it for Win by Noon and for my, my mortgage team now for a really long time, six, seven, eight years, something crazy like that, almost eight years maybe. So, um, so that'll be a great, a great opportunity. What questions, Deb, do you have for Walt? What was the hardest part or the first Band-Aid you had to rip off for anyone who's listening who wants to do this, but they just, they've delayed? What advice would you give them? Um, well, I think that the, the first thing is, if you're going to do, let's say that you're going to do a, a CE class for realtors, where do you get information? What do you talk about? And I think that's, you know, I hear that all the time. Um, well, we've got excellent resources. I mean, we've got... I get my information from Dan Rawich, from Barry Habib, and from uh, David Childers. So keeping current matters. Uh, and, and I will create a presentation about the things and, that they've talked about. And also borrow smart university blog. Yep, yep. And and exactly, and I, I missed that one. So <laughs> Todd Ballinger's borrow smart. So, you know, <clears throat> and I just gather the information over the month. Uh, and, and I'll talk to realtors about what's your biggest fear right now? I mean, what, you know, how's your business going? And they'll tell you what, what they need to hear, what, what information they need for the next class coming up. So it's just, for me, it's just gathering the information I would think is the first thing. And then at that point, it's just pulling the trigger. How do you pull the trigger? So you either create a database on your own. If you're going to do a CE class for realtors, create a database on your own. So you can then market it whether that database is in Facebook or it's in your CRM um, and, you know, or you go to the title company and ask them to help you market it. Um, and, and then the other question is, is how are you going to do it? Are you going to do it via zoom? Are you going to do it in person? I too am a, am a uh, student, a, 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 not a, a um, Ryan, Ryan did my, did my camera, did my sound, did my mic, did, did all of that as well. So that was back in July of 2021 when he first started doing, doing those things. So, you know, I, I think if you're doing a Zoom, it doesn't need to be, I mean, you can use just a normal camera, but I wanted to step mine up a little bit and I want to step my sound up a little bit uh, because I knew that I would start to do a lot of the CE classes via Zoom. Um, but you don't have to, I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. So, so Walt, let's do this. I wanted to bring you in, start this conversation, everyone. We've got a minute left to go. Uh, I put a few links because some people asked for Jeremy for CA's five questions. I put a link to the YouTube video on that. I also put it in the five questions. Uh, I did write a, a LinkedIn article on that. I will make that a mortgage coach blog and once i make it a mortgage coach blog i will share that with everyone so keep an eye out for jeremy's five questions to the mortgage coach blog todd let's close it out wrap it up win by noon style oh you know so my job is to get you guys to take action right you just sat here for an hour whether you're watching this live or in or in youtube and uh, you made an investment but an investment of time without action is just entertainment and so really think about we started off this call talking about what are the daily things that you can consume to make you better, right? And then Dave really walked through presentations and, and really gave his top tips on how you can really have the best presentation ultimately to win more business. And, you know, I just highly encourage you to think about reading the challenger sale, but even if you just take Dave's points and think, how can you improve in those areas? Um, then we transitioned to Deborah, who really gave you some Facebook and Instagram tips that'll make you instantly better. Um, and so make sure you're following her and doing that. And then Walt really closed out with, hey, it's not that hard to take action. And so there's way too many things for you to choose from. So pick the top one and start that today, right? Schedule some time. It's Friday. Um, make sure you get your loose ends tied up for the weekend. But the bottom line is, is that you probably have time in your day to actually implement and start working on one of those strategies. So guys, this is wrap up time. Thank you for tuning in to The Mortgage Coach on Friday at nine o'clock for a mastermind. Reminding you guys every Tuesday at nine o'clock, we're putting on the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry. It is an interview with someone amazing. So make sure it's on your calendar. And then remember, if you go to the mortgage coach um, calendar, every day of the week, we have a one hour live training, whether it's technology training on Wednesdays and Thursdays on how to use our platform, sales leadership on, on Tuesdays and Fridays, or beginners training. 
If you're new to Mortgage Coach, every Monday at nine o'clock, we're there to take you from white belt to orange belt with Mortgage Coach. Have a great weekend, everybody. And thanks for everyone's time today. Have a good one. Take care. All right, guys. Crush it. Have fun. Bye, everybody. This call is a wrap.